last Sunday, uh, right at the end of praise and worship, we, we got a word from the Lord from Ruth Parkinson and uh, kind of the main point, I guess it was all good, is that we have sort of been um, got a, like special recognition from God as a, as a body and that we're a battalion. And she was really excited about it. Afterwards, she was saying, I, it was almost I couldn't find the words. And I don't really know how to describe it. I think she was trying to just summarize it. And I said, well, uh, let me take a pop at it right here. And I said that, that he has favored us to do what he has called us to do. And she said, that's exactly right. So in light of that, I want to talk to you about, this is a set time. And even a couple of weeks ago, I think when, whenever it was, two, three weeks ago, talked about it was a set time for the vengeance of God and certain things were going to happen. And uh, it would be a time of the church taking hold of who we're supposed to be. And so why am I going to keep say, saying that? Well, because you have to whenever you're in a place where when you, what you see with your natural eyes goes against that. Because you're getting bombarded with messages from the world and the world system contrary to what God wants to speak to you or the revelation he wants to give you that you are, this was a setup by God for his people to take hold of who we are and to walk in our kingdom inheritance and that we would become the head, not the tail. It's a time of blessing. So, Pastor David, look around. People are losing jobs and everything. That's why we got to call things that be not as though they were. So, I want you to know, this is a set time, a appointed time by God from the foundation of the world. So, we don't need to run from it. We need to run with it. Hallelujah. Let's look at Psalm 102.13. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Zion, now for in the New Testament, this is the church, okay? For the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. Hallelujah. This is really what we heard by the Spirit of God last Sunday. It is a set time. This year 2020, even though look how it started out, uh, you know, that's just what the devil does whenever God is about to do something great, whether in your life personally or whatever, to get your eyes off what you're going to and put them on what you're going through. And if you do that, you'll never get to where God is leading you. But we keep looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And then we come out on the other side and there's always promotion waiting for us. Or we could just stay in all the funk. And you know, I don't like that. I like to get to the other side as fast as I pop, uh, possibly can. So we need to proclaim this with me. This is the year, is the year. of God's favor, God's favor. upon the church. the church. Hallelujah. That's you and I. So I believe that the year 2020, by the time it's over, you're going to see the evidence, is the year that the favor of God is being poured out on the church in great measure. We're supposed to start acting like we're the body of Christ. The whole world and all the creation is groaning like a uh, a mother during childbirth uh, is groaning and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And that is who we are. And so in order to proclaim it, we're going to have to call those things that be not as though they were. And sometimes when I say that, I think of this example. You guys, you know who Gavin McLeod is, right? Um, yeah, he was... Uh, Love Boat, Mary Tyler Moore. He was even McHale's Navy. And now he does a lot of Christian movies and stuff. So uh, he was married a long time to his wife. And then they got a divorce. And he was living in New York. And she was living in L.A. And they hardly saw each other. But they still loved each other. But they just, you know, weren't getting along. And it, one thing led to another. 
And so one day she just, his wife, Patty, I think is her name, she just decided that she'd had enough of that. She realized and said, you know, the devil ripped us off and stole our marriage. She said, and I want my husband back. So she went to God and, and started declaring that she was going to get her husband back. They'd been divorced for quite some time. And so as an act of faith, every time she would come in, come home, when she'd leave the house, she'd come home to an empty house. She would open the door and say, honey, I'm home as an act of faith and just declare that. And she kept doing it and she kept doing it and she kept saying it. And then it, um, yeah, I can't really remember how long that process took place, but uh, he called her up and said, I, I hear you're going to be uh, in town. Would you come over and see me? I've been missing you. So she goes over the next thing you know, they get remarried. And this has been many, many years after that. And they're happily married. And so that's what happens when it doesn't look good. The circumstances don't look that way, but you keep speaking, believing it and speaking it. That was just an act of faith and God honored it. Hallelujah. So the scripture we just read, Psalm 102, 13, it speaks of a set time, referring to a prophetic time, a specific changeless time that God has appointed to take place. You can either get with it and be part of it, <clears throat> or you can reject it and not be part of it. But it's going to happen because when God speaks something, when God sets a timetable, it's going to happen. And it's a time that God has already ordained. No devil, no world system, no government can keep it from coming to pass or alter it. All these governors and everything that think they're going to play God, they cannot alter or change what God has ordained is going to set into motion. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next slide. These are Greek words talking about time. There's chronos, which is chronological time or linear time, you know, 2019, 2020, 2021. Then there's kairos. It's an appointed set time. There's an appointment. This is the word that's used when it says, when the fullness of time has come, Jesus then entered on the scene on the earth. It was a appointed time, a set time when the fullness of the Kairos time had come. And then eon, of course, means eternity or no time, which we can live in that realm by faith when we're born again. It won't automatically happen. You got to use your faith. Duh. The just shall live by faith. All right, let's look at Genesis 15, 13 through 14. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them. And they shall afflict them for 400 years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out with great substance. So this is a perfect illustration of a set time that God uh, declared and he declared the following four things. They would be enslaved. It would last 400 years. God would judge that nation. And the people would come out with great possessions. And that is exactly what happened. They left Egypt. They spoiled the Egyptians when they came out. So there was a set time for this to happen. A designated season which could not be altered. Now... I believe that a new thing or a new season has been birthed by God to manifest into this natural realm. But it's going to take the spiritual people of God to make it manifest fully for the, for the total victory. And you could say, well, I don't believe that. No, I don't, well, you, and then you're not going to participate in it. You, you don't have to. You've got a free will. But for me at my house... I want all the blessing and the goodness of God, no matter what looks like in front of our face. 
Uh, it's good, just like what we read in Genesis 15. It's a time for us to come out of the enslavement. Listen, care of the enslavement of the Egypt-like world-conforming system. Christians are living in the Egypt world-conforming system, and sometimes it takes a little pressure for you to move and move out. Do you think um, Elijah, when he went to the brook, you know, and the ravens fed him in the morning and the evening, he had cool, clean water, everyone else in a drought and everything. Do you think if that brook never dried up, he would have ever left there? No, he'd have just stayed there. But God had something better for him, so his brook dried up. So he would listen to God, and God said, go to Zarephath. I have already commanded a widow woman to sustain thee there. So when your brook dries up, God already has made provision in advance, and it's time for you to seek the face of God. And sometimes your brook has to dry up so you can move on to something better that God has for you. And so for a lot of people today, their brook is drying up, but if they are, uh, uh, love the Lord and trust God, they're going to come out on top. And this is what, how the church is going to be elevated because we're going to start using our faith more than ever before. So let's look at Psalm 66, 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads, we went through fire and through water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. Hallelujah. We had all this uh, uh, deep state riding over our heads, but God is bringing us out and bringing us into a wealthy place. We have just entered a time planned from the foundation of the world. A set time of grace and favor upon the church that has never been experienced. Hallelujah. Jesus, he's not coming back for a milk toast, weak, you know, good for nothing, ineffective church. He's coming back for a church triumphant. Hallelujah. And so uh, it's, it's going to be something great, greater than we've experienced, whether it's our ministry, our marriages, our businesses, our bank accounts. What a new season of success and prosperity has begun. Pastor David, look at the, the GDP. Look at the uh, unemployment. That's why I'm saying this. We got to break through. This is what God is doing. You can't go by what you see in the natural while we look not at the things which are seen in the natural, but rather at the unseen spiritual realm for the things that are seen are temporary, subject to change. It's going to change and it's going to be this year. Hallelujah. You're going to see change for the things that are unseen are eternal. Hallelujah. So, um, so I want to, you know, again, if you don't believe it, you won't get it. So let me challenge you to confess and expect only good things to start happening to you. You know, that'd be good advice for any time, really. Uh, so no more delays, I declare, holdups, setbacks, things prepared for you from the foundation of the world are being released to you now in Jesus' name. Why? Because it's a set time. The set time for God's favor is upon your life. Hallelujah. So let's review what favor is so you'll know what to expect. Um, and uh, be immediately begin to experience its benefits. Okay. So favor is defined in Webster's Dictionary as the following. To respond with kindness, to support, to aid, to provide with advantages, to ease or make easier, to endorse or to be featured. This is what God is, wants to do for you if you will let him. He wants to be kind, show you kindness, 
support you, aid you, provide you with advantages, ease or make things easier. They get done faster, better, easier, and to endorse or feature you and favor you. Hallelujah. Just imagine God showing up and giving you preferential treatment, honoring you, providing you with advantages, and making things easier for you. Would you like that? Well, you can have it if you'll receive it. Hallelujah. Let's look at Proverbs 14, 9. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Hallelujah. So throughout the Bible, if you think about it, anyone who did anything significant for God experienced God's favor. Isn't that right? You think these people did it on their own abilities and in talents and everything? No. His favor was not granted to them because they earned it or because they deserved it. You can't buy favor. You can't be good enough for it. Favor is a token of God's love and his kindness. Jesus earned the favor of God so that we don't have to. And he then lives inside of us. He earned the favor for us when he paid the price at Calvary. So just receive it by faith. And so declare this after me. The favor of God, favor of God. is on my life on my in Jesus' name. Jesus. So this might be a little different than what you heard some religious folks may have taught about God, but we have a God who loves to favor his children and make a difference between the church and the heathens. Amen? Uh, don't you like to favor your children? Amen? Hallelujah. So, I want you to know God's not an old man with a long white beard, a big club in his hand, waiting for you to make a mistake. Because if he did, was like that, you'd just be a greasy spot on the floor right now. Because, but thank God he's not. He's a God that gives us, we receive his grace, unmerited favor by faith. And we don't have to earn the favor of God. You don't have to cry and beg to get his attention that maybe he just might hear. No, you can boldly approach his throne of grace. God is good and his favor. I got some good news for you. His favor is available to you at any time. Hallelujah. Favor is all, uh, often translated as grace and grace is God's unmerited favor. So you don't deserve it. You don't earn it. But God just gives it to you anyway because he loves you. So, let's see what God told Abraham, which is also for you because we're sons of Abraham. Isn't that what the Bible said? Or the seed of Abraham. Genesis 12, 2 in the Amplified. I will make you a great nation and I will bless you with abundant increase of favors. And make your name famous and distinguished and you will be a blessing dispensing goods to others. You have to be blessed before you could be a blessing. Amen. So, uh, and we've got the Abrahamic covenant. And then we got the new covenant, new and better on top of that. Glory to God. So, because we're, we're through Christ, we are Abraham's seed. And uh, so through this covenant, we have God's favor. Now, in the Old Testament, remember the story of Joseph. God's favor was upon Joseph. He was sold as a slave to an Egyptian uh, captain named Potiphar. And so while he was serving in uh, Potiphar's house, the scripture says, quote, So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house. And all that he had, he put under his authority. That's Genesis 39, 4. So if we were faithful to God 
And he could put a lot of things into our hands and give us authority over them. This is what he wants to do. He doesn't want the non-covenant people to have that authority. He wants his children to have the authority. And then, okay, so Joseph is going along great. He's got the favor of God, but he lives in Egypt, okay? That's the world. We are in the world, not of the world, so we're going to have to face the same thing. And then by false accusation of Potiphar's wife, Joseph was put in prison. And Genesis 39, 21 says, quote, The Lord was with Joseph, showed him mercy, and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. You couldn't keep him down. He kept in front of him the dream and the vision that God had given him and remained faithful, and he never let go of it. And no matter what happened, he was given favor and put in charge no matter where he was. Hallelujah. And so no matter where he ended up, God promoted him and did things in his life that were considered impossible. And God favored him and gave him preferential treatment, producing honor in the midst of trouble and hardship, and then put him in charge of the whole world. Hallelujah. So we should confess every day about God's favor upon us. Okay. Anybody got a second hand? Anybody have a watch anymore with a second hand? Anybody? Okay. Got one? All right, tell me when you're ready. Okay, go. In Jesus' name, God's favor is upon me today. Everywhere I go, everything I do, I expect the favor of God to be in manifestation. I will never again be without the favor of God. Stop. How many? 20 seconds. Do you think, what do you think a difference of that 20 seconds every day might make in your life? <clears throat> so, but it's, I, I did that to say this. It's up to us to declare favor, even though God has blessed it, blessed us with it. Is it God's responsibility to declare it? Or is it our responsibility? It's ours, and that's not too much of a burden, I don't think, about 20 seconds. If you talk a little faster, you might get it down to 15. <laughs> so we have to speak it if we want to see it. You just be faithful and speak it and declare it. Because when you start speaking it, God may actually think that you want it. Praise God. And he gives you the desires of your heart. Let's look at Isaiah 65, 16. So it shall be that he who vo invokes a blessing on himself in the land shall do so by saying. You have to say it. It's up to us to say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We have to to invoke a blessing, you want to invoke God's blessing on you, you got to do it by saying, hallelujah. It's up to us to call things that be not as though they were. So Joseph continually had the favor of God, even though he had a lot of hardships. He could have been in that prison, becoming bitter, complaining, having a pity party, blaming the Egyptians, or even blaming God. But the problem with becoming bitter is the things that you think on and meditate then will soon be in your life. Oh, this guy treated me bad. Oh, then people are going to start treating you bad. Don't talk like that. Say, I have the favor of God. People go out of their way to give me preferential treatment. Hallelujah. Whether they want to or not, so mighty is the favor of God upon me in Jesus' name. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So start thinking in your heart that you have the favor of God. Hallelujah. Realize that a bad attitude can cut off the favor of God. 
Joseph maintained the right attitude and refused to allow the negative circumstances to control him. You see, Joseph was a thermostat, not a thermometer. Wherever he was, he changed the atmosphere. He didn't conform to the atmosphere like a, and show what that is like a thermometer. He was like the thermostat. He set the atmosphere and then other people had to conform and change. That's our jobs. The uh, Proverbs eleven twenty seven in the Living Bible says, if you search for good, you will find God's favor. If you search for evil, you will find his curse. So search for good, look for good, speak the good, expect the favor of God and speak it. And that's what you'll get. People in the Bible like Joseph and Peter and Daniel and Paul and Esther and Ruth and Mary, they all operated in the favor of God. And the Bible said even Jesus, Luke 2.52, increased in wisdom and stature and in favor of with God and man. So it's okay to get the favor of God if Jesus did it. Amen? Don't let a bunch of religious people talk you out of that. I believe that Jesus expected favor to show up in everything that he did and every place that he went. Remember, in the kingdom of God, you get what you expect. Isn't that what uh, uh, in the parable of the talents, a couple of them, those days, oh, I knew you were a hard man. And, and what did the, the guy said? Out of your own mouth, I will judge you. So quit saying God's hard on you. Quit expecting him to be hard on you. Expect him to bless you, favor you, give you preferential treatment, and bless you with abundant increase of favor. And you do it by saying so. Hallelujah. So let me remind you of some of the benefits of God's favor. Supernatural increase, restoration, honor, and increased assets. That sounds pretty good to me. Just think what you can do with that. How much of a blessing you can do, you can be to people. So as you speak and declare God's favor in your life and on your family and upon your church and and on your pastor, hallelujah. <laughs> Expect to see increase in honor flow to you from various sources. Don't limit God. You'll take the favor from anywhere, hallelujah. Don't tell God how to do it. No, he, he knows how to do it. Just expect it and then receive it when it comes your way. Expect impossible things like... Uh, getting raises or getting that new contract to come into existence. Expect promotion and answers to problems that, oh, that was easy. Praise the Lord. So these are all benefits that are reserved for you, not because you deserve them. Forget that. Get that out of your mind. But because it's the set time of God's favor upon your life. So, uh, as an act of faith, I'm asking you to make a list uh, of the exact areas in your life where you need favor. Or where do you need increase? What do you need restored? What honor would help you in your dream or your vision? What blessings are you trusting God for? Then confess these things every day. Well, even if you have to say, honey, I'm home to an empty house, do it because it works. It's a kingdom principle and it works the same way every time, no matter who's doing it. You don't have to be Patty McLeod. You could be who you are and do it and you'll see it come to pass. So stand to your feet and we're going to do a confession of favor and we will be through. Hallelujah. Just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive and declare your favor in my life today. 
I am the righteousness of God. And therefore I can receive covenant kindness and covenant favor. I thank you for your favor that surrounds me like a shield. Everywhere I go, in everything I do, and with everyone I meet. I expect good things to happen in my life because your divine favor is upon me. Your favor in my life is immeasurable, limitless, and abounds towards me. Thank you, Father, because your special favor produces supernatural increase, promotion, restoration, honor, increased assets, greater victories, prominence, recognition, preferential treatment, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, and battles won in which I do not have to fight. Your spotlight of favor is on my life now. Thank you for causing your face to shine upon me and giving me an abundance of favor with you and with man. This year is my set time of favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Receive the favor of God. Hallelujah. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it, and I declare the favor of God upon you.